So good morning, everybody. Um, we're from Cork City in Ireland, and any of you that haven't uh, been to Cork, uh, I hope you decide to travel there soon. We're talking to the mayor, and uh, he was saying that he's enjoyed his visits there, so I'll have a chat with him about some uh, good places to, uh, to visit when he's there. Uh, my role is as Learning City Coordinator, and my colleague, William McAuliffe, uh, has been with me along this journey since uh, 2003. I'm his grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of my first two. <laughs> um, so we're from Cork City, which is the second city of Ireland. And as the second city, uh, if you drive around, you'll see hanging up on uh, some of the flagpoles. Our uh, colours are red and white. And on the flagpoles, you'll see red flags with a white star with welcome to the People's Republic of Cork. Uh, because I suppose as a second city, uh, we have a strange mix of uh, uh, la lack of confidence and bravado. And if there's anything we can do to get one up on our big brother up in Dublin, we are more than happy to do it. Um, so our learning city journey has uh, reflected a good sense of our uh, own identity, really. And, uh, um, it's brought together partners who I think wouldn't have uh, come together easily and we've seen really unexpected results. So as you've made a brilliant start already, I know you've launched in November and when I look around the room today I can see uh, you've got all the ingredients you need. Um, so there's a few uh, C's I'm going to use this morning before we get into the slides. Um, being from Cork I thought we'd, we'd focus on the letter C. Uh, so. Uh, if I could s ask you to think about a couple of things uh, during our, uh, our story, uh, it is context. Your context in Wolverhampton is very different to the context in Swansea, in Bristol, in Cork. There are similarities, but you know Wolverhampton better than anyone from any other city. And whatever you do around your Learning City initiatives, it needs to really reflect that context. The second C I wanted to talk about was champions. And you have champions already, Mary, uh, your mayor, and all of you in the room. Have a quick look around. Do you know everybody who's here? Because you may need to know them well if you're going to continue on this journey. So and a morning like today is a brilliant opportunity to get a sense of who the champions for this initiative are. The next C is uh, cross-sectoral. Uh, our Learning City efforts would not have been as successful unless we took a cross-sectoral approach. So uh, we had a round table meeting recently. We have them twice a year. And there was a broad range of sectors there. And very strongly coming up from the floor was a learning city is not the same as an educating city. And it's something that we, while we know we're about learning, informal, non-formal, and formal, it's something we need to keep reminding ourselves. Um, so a cross-sectoral approach linking with other uh, sectors and we've used an echo well idea, so that's something I think you know you could consider taking. And the last C is uh, to connect, to connect with another C citizens and another C communities. If you're involved in a learning city effort, from our experience, if it doesn't connect with citizens and communities in a meaningful way, <coughs> you can have very good plans, very good uh, intentions, but it needs to be real for people who live in your city or in your region. So our journey, I have one or two too many slides, so we'll flick through them. Uh, there's a lot of information and analysis behind each one of them, and I've brought a range of materials that we've developed over the years. If they're of use to you, please uh, come up to us afterwards. So the challenge, generally, we're all facing. Nobody knows how to do this. There's brilliant information available from UNESCO and from other cities, but there's no blueprint. All uh, cities and regions are complex. Organisations have to report to their own uh, funders or departments, their silos. Uh, maintaining motivation is really key, and no one organisation can do it alone. Our story started back in 2002, uh, and it's set out uh, to, uh, in our city development board plan of that year, to create a culture of learning in Cork, and one of its seven goals was to um, have Cork as a city of learning. So the goals that are there are still relevant all the <coughs> years later. The echo well idea I mentioned uh, means we decided from uh, about halfway through the journey that we needed to take uh, a cross-sectoral and a linking approach. 
where we link uh, ECHOWELL basically is a word that was created by an Australian academic. It stands for Ecology, Economy, Community Culture, Wellbeing, and the last LL is for Lifelong Learning. So all, in all our efforts uh, since 2012, we have tried to talk to the health sector, the economic sector, the environmental sector, as well as the learning sector. And uh, we've wrapped social inclusion around that ever since. And that's easy to say, and it's quite difficult to do. But the more uh, uh, representatives you have in the room, the better chance you have of doing it. Um, it breaks out of silos, and it uh, creates a more holistic idea. Um, Mary said, and uh, Jackie at the start, that we want our cities and our regions to be better places for people to live. And that's exactly what this is all about. So our own story uh, brought us to, uh, into the UNESCO story in 2013 when we were invited to the Beijing First Conference on Learning Cities, and our mayor ended up being the spokesperson for all the mayors in the final plenary. Our second uh, uh, connection was in 2015, where our city received its Learning City Award in Mexico, and uh, my colleague here, my older brother, Willie, uh, was uh, there to receive that award. And um, we also joined uh, the Pascal Learning Cities Network, and that's another uh, different way maybe of, of improving your connections with other thinking worldwide. And then I suppose that one of the high points on our story was in September of 2017, where UNESCO selected Cork as a small city in the bigger scheme of things. The previous two Beijing and Mexico are mega cities, but Cork was the first city in Europe and North America to host this conference. So we had to take a different approach. Uh, and we had over 500 delegates from all over the world, and we had an enjoyable few days, as well as getting a lot out of it. So, And it was great. Bristol received their award there, and the second set of cities did. Uh, Swansea and Cork were among the first 12, and a second set of 16 received UNESCO Learning City Awards there. So these are some of the highlights. This is our Bano moment on the right-hand side. Um, the reason I put that up is because they're the four, uh, the chief executives and the presidents of the four lead partners in our Learning City effort. So it's the two third level institutes, UCC and CIT, City Council, which has no budget for education, so it doesn't have a remit, but it's actively involved, and the head of the Further Education Training Board, Cork Education Training Board. So um, to have them bo all four share a podium, they delivered a joint keynote, they took a project each and spoke about it, and this was the thing at the end, which was surprised everybody, because that's a famous photograph or a, a very similar one uh, that was taken in Belfast when Bono, uh, David Trimble, and John Hume all stood on the stage at the end of the speech. And it, it uh, just came from the heart. It was spontaneous, because I was upstairs in the planning room, and I had no sense that this was actually going to happen. There was still a lot of edginess. The, the organisations worked very well together, but uh, th that just showed me we were after making a lot of ground. Uh, and on the left, there are all the partners behind the, the conference. So as uh, Judith alluded to, um, the reason for that conference was to challenge cities as learning cities to consider uh, could learning be a driver to achieve sustainable development goals, not just on education. And again, going back to the, our citizens telling us education and learning are often confused and maybe they need to be constantly uh, named as separate, uh, separate things and joined together. Education, obviously, is part of lifelong learning and life-wide learning. But uh, goals 11 and 17 were key. That's sustainable cities and communities and partnerships. So our learning city has been a really good way for us to work in partnership. Learning is a low-risk partnership. There's little to be lost. It's all positive, And um, that's been a real force for good. So the outcome document from that conference was the uh, UNESCO Cork Call to Action on Learning Cities. So there are many, many uh, measures within their documentation, and again, I have copies here. 42 separate measures, actually. But what I found with UNESCO is they're quite empowering, and they will allow you, as Wolverhampton Learning City Region, to select the measures that you think will make the biggest difference to your citizens and to your city and to your region, and uh, work on those and measure those. But uh, the call from 2017 was to focus on green and healthy learning cities, equitable and inclusive learning cities, and cities that support decent work and entrepreneurship. So our challenges in Cork are similar to some of the other challenges that were highlighted. We have areas of the city that have consistently remained, uh, I suppose, outside of the, the mainstream in terms of opportunities, uh, educational progression, etc. And then we have other challenges. We have an ageing population. We need to see this as an asset. 
We have a, a growing multinational population, uh, something that wouldn't have been the case in Ireland, say, up to the 70s. Uh, youth unemployment, we've had 10 years of a recession uh, under austerity, and that uh, our young adults are coming out of that. Uh, the growth of our city is one of the things that's uh, um, needing to be considered now. We're growing into a region, so your discussions at Wolverhampton are very relevant to us. And, and our model involves strong partnerships, and it's always a challenge to retain those. These are some of the um, uh, elements of our Cork Learning City story, and that's in documents, as I say. They're on our website, and I can give you hard copies, anyone that wants them. Um, what I was saying earlier is around practical projects, and we continue to focus on these. The reason a lot of that development happened was because of something very simple. The idea that uh, to grow a culture of learning in your city, you could have a festival of learning. So this was mentioned at our town hall meeting, and I was in the audience, and I thought, I don't think so. Uh, we have a jazz festival in Cork, we have a folk festival, we have a choral festival, and they're all very successful. They're uh, there's loads of entertainment, there's a bit of socialising, uh, and I didn't think learning would fit that well with it. And boy, was I wrong. So the first year it ran, and Willie will give you the full story, there were 65 events. There's a couple of key things. All the events are free, so nobody pays. All the events are hosted voluntarily by the organisations. So you work with the willing, the people who want to host them, and you give them a lot of publicity. And that's it, simple as that. So that was 2004. In 2018, we had almost 600 events of that nature. All free, still all free, and all hosted voluntarily in a small city the size of Cork. So it's just one model, but a lot of what happened our UNESCO award, the hosting of uh, the conference in Cork was because the festival had worked to achieve something that seems a high aspiration to develop a culture of learning in Cork. But if you have conversations with people now in the street or at an event, you'll hear them talking about learning in a different way. And it's something that it took all that amount of time. This isn't a, a fast project, but uh, it has surprised uh, us all. So now I invite Willie, to talk about one of our flagship examples, our uh, Lifelong Learning Festival. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Not bad. Six minutes. Yeah. Six <laughs> minutes. Thanks for the card. It seems to be better reading. <laughs> <laughs> I move away from the mic because I don't want to be standing behind that. Okay. Quite simply, I think we've listened to a laugh this morning here in theory and practice and all that. Where I'm coming from, Having worked in education all of my life, I think what it comes down to for me uh, is simply the relationship that you have with different people in your own city and the culture of that city. And the culture we've discovered is very different in every place. Your culture, as Dennis said, you can't do things the way we do them, we won't do them the way you do them, because it depends on the culture and the environment. We've a lot in common still. I was really disappointed that you mentioned all our problems. We have unemployment as well. We have disadvantage, we have north south in the city, we have all that going on. So there's nothing unusual about that. It's how we deal with it in different ways and not make it more of a problem. And going back to 2002, I think, uh, there was one document produced in Cork, and the heading for that still stays in my mind. And it was simply called imagine our future. And the more I think about that, it's still fresh for me anyway. Imagine, just the idea of imagining what our future will be. And out of that document, and out of simple few meetings, there came the idea, as Dennis has said, the idea of a festival of learning. Now, coming from a teaching background, you wouldn't normally associate festivals with teaching, or learning, or anything like that. But it was a kind of catchy notion to put something across to people as a festival of learning. Because the challenge is how you see learning straight away. You know? It's out of the classroom. And as Dennis said, it began as a two-day event, a couple of events cobbled together, and asking people to take part in this with the umbrella idea of being a festival. And it ran for the two days, and that was fine. And we were kind of thinking after that, there's something in this. Because in each of these little events that took place, they were no longer just a little event on the road. They were part of something else, a kind of umbrella. And the umbrella was the festival idea. And we survived that first year, and we said we'd have another go off it the following year. 
and we had more events. And within a few years, it began to really turn around. It wasn't the case of us going out looking for people to take part anymore. They brought it to be part of them. So it turned into an event where we have around 500 events in the week in the city every year, where people, going by the kind of motto that we have, they investigate, they participate, and they celebrate during that week. And then other people say, that's grand, that's lovely, it's only a week. And then what do you do the rest of the year? And that challenges us too, because when you look at it, it's not just the week. The events are highlighted during the week, they're focused on, but all of these groups, individuals, clubs, societies, schools, everybody, they're all leaving the way the whole They're working on it. But at least during the week, there's a focus on the learning. Defined, it's a kind of definition of learning. In all its forms, people began to buy into this kind of thinking, and they look forward to the festival of learning, and their concept of learning has changed as a result of that. That culture has changed in their in, in, in the kind of mindset of people. So it has grown and grown over the years. It's something that we haven't changed the formula of very much, because if it's winning, we keep going with it. Key things, I think, is there are no costs. <coughs> we don't charge anyone to take part in it. They run their own event. They run it according to the way they do things, so we don't bombard them with paper and sign this and sign that, or kind of make it overly official for them. We don't kill them with paper. And it, there's a freedom within that for people that they like to showcase their own piece, their own club, their own society, their own work that they'd actually be doing. Whether it's a visit to the local theatre where they see backstage at some of the events, whether it's a seminar, whether it's a community event taking place out in the open, whether it's a talk about something, <coughs> whether it's morning, noon, or night, it doesn't matter. But during the week, they're all listed here and people can take part in that. That was one thing. Something else that followed, and I'm watching time, <laughs> then it's like pick up on this, was that uh, the idea of a learning neighborhood. That kind of brings it down into a microcosm, from a city to a neighborhood. And I know you're talking about reasons, yeah. going the opposite way, but I think it's very important that there is a microcosm of small little units. And within that, one great idea that came out of it was having a thing called faces of learning in a community. Four areas in the city were interested in this. And those phases of learning, again, challenges, simply challenges how people define learning in their own mind. And it was having posters like this, and even on the back of a bus, if anybody wants a picture on the back of a bus, it's another story, of people's local faces, young, old, colours of all descriptions, all shapes and sizes of people as we are on the back of the bus. But who are they? They're faces of learning. They're learners. And that challenge is again how we how we just think about what's learning, not just education. So those kind of ideas, some people say it very simply. They are, but they're, they're kind of very important as well, that we don't decide that what's what is simple is very valuable. And then how we define that. And uh, Dennis has spoken about the music generation. I think that you can hand over now at this stage and thank you all for this. I So, yeah, there's one other project, and I won't go into it here. Right, sorry. Yeah, music generation. <laughs> no, this is a uh, terrible thing to do to our host, Can't and they're the most me. gracious host. Caught me out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's uh, just an arts program. Uh, the arts, like the neighborhoods and like the festival, is a very quick win. There's a lot of energy around it, and it's something that's worked for us. And again, we have information, background uh, documentation on that if you, if you have any further interest in that, particularly. Our partners go across. Uh, the formal institutions, but going back to the idea that uh, this isn't uh, just about education. Our health service executive is a partner, uh, as are our social inclusion organisation in the city. Um, we have an MOU that underpins all this. It's a practical thing. Once, once those four heads signed it, even though they've all changed since except for one, the, uh, the understanding and the commitment is still in place. 
we're working on our plan i won't get into any of that uh, it's all available there if you want to have a look at it this is what i want to finish on just recently uh, at unesco level there's a global network but locally we're beginning to learn a lot more from each other so you'll see tommy's there freezing in the cold holding up his sign this was uh, uh, <laughs> and on the left is danny power from belfast and belfast is working really hard on this agenda belfast has challenges beyond what we have in Cork and we do a lot of work with Belfast because uh, that's our own uh, contribution as much as we can towards peace building on our own island. But this is just the start. Today's event in Wolverhampton uh, and with any of the other connections in Europe and beyond I really would suggest take the opportunities, bring people here. Uh, these are the other partners we need to link with in Cork so we have a lot of uh, further work to go. Um, just to finish up, I suppose this is one of the stories that came out of the, our experiences over the last few years. Uh, this was an engineering idea, but it was through the Music Generation programme that it came up. The head of engineering thought we could do something for Music Generation, we got our engineering students to design pieces of technology. Jenny there has cerebral palsy, very, very limited movement. James was a, a master's student and he worked on a piece of assistive technology which she, which she could wear on her head to perform in a band and they performed for the UNESCO conference in September. And just to finish with, a, with an invitation, thank you again for those that invited us here and thanks to all of you for the great uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to host a Learning City Conversation event in November in Cork and you'd be all most welcome, I'd be delighted to see you there. Thank you very much.